Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and today I'm going to get into a quick video on how to have your Google Home speakers announce things based on your uh, motion detectors or other sensors with smart things. So for example, this is uh, one of the alarms I have set up. The garage door is open. So as far as that goes, uh, this will be using smart things and you may have recalled that i actually have a video like this um, but the thing is is that particular one is slightly outdated i'm going to keep it up in case if you're still running an older version of a particular program but as far as things goes with modern stuff uh that doesn't really work so let's jump on in now you will do need a few things you will need to have smart things obviously you will need to have your sensors up and running and you will need to have web core i will leave a link down below to this and it's pretty thorough has a video guide and everything so check that out but uh, beyond that you will need to have the api now with this the actual developer they actually have a graphical interface i highly advise just running that's the easiest and it, in fact it tells you which file to download based on on this just download the actual file based on uh, whatever operating system you're running one thing i want to mention is make sure your firewall does not block the program so once you get up and running the big thing to note is the um, uh, program it uses your local network to find your devices your google home devices and um, obviously for your smart things to communicate with it it uses your local network so make sure your firewall is not blocking it now at this point uh, make sure w whenever you put this on a computer make sure that this is on a computer that will be running during the time that you want this to work so whether it's 24 hours a day you want this to work or maybe a certain time period during the day you want certain audio alarms for whatever reason make sure you put this on some device that will be running that time i highly recommend if you don't have a computer to do this than just a simple raspberry 35 dollars easy uh setup and everything uh the fact of the matter is just throw it on there and cheap cheap to run not a lot of electricity and again it's just like 35 dollars for a raspberry and um and i'll recommend going through that method so from here what you need to do is go to the settings and note the host name and port this will come in handy later um, set it to what you want in this case I'm just leaving it as that for example sake and from here what you need to do is go to the following link and this will take you to um, to a few things that you need to copy and paste for your smart things device to actually be able to recognize what you're doing so first things first is you need to go to the following link or i will link this down below too and um and basically follow what this says what you need to do is go to that and go to the device handler create new and and just follow it and also follow the pictures same thing with this um this is also the device handler and finally that is the my smart apps it's very simple very straightforward now once you get that up and running the uh, next part of this is going to be through the smart things app and i will see you on that so as far as things goes the first thing that you need to do is go to your smart things app and then just go to automation go down to add a smart app and then my apps now get the uh, web core set up and all that other stuff and uh, go through that but also you need to get the cast web up i'm just going to show you a finalize so you can see what i'm talking about as the um, api host address this is what i was talking about with the ip address that's listed in the uh, port and if you have it running the user interface running on the device raspberry pi computer whatever then it should show on that main page so note that 
Now, um, I highly recommend testing the API connection at this point, and that will let you know if you got a problem or should go back and forth and try to fix that out. From there, go to service manage level log, and I set mine to zero just because. Then following that, go to discover devices, and if the discover devices should show up here. If they don't, and it's almost like almost immediately, if they don't show up, restart the application that's on your computer or Raspberry Pi or whatever it may be, and then it should probably show up. So from there, just go click the devices and, and go through that. So from that, what you need to do is go um, back. Uh, once you saved everything, go back, go to home, and go to cast web device. So from here, you it's best to name your devices. So look at the volume level and then go to the Google Home application and look at your devices and most likely one say google home mini or whatever is not going to be the same volume level as something else so you can quickly figure out what device is what based on that otherwise you're going to play around with this a bit but go to the um, settings here and then just name the device there from there so i'm not going to name this particular device because it's tv and i don't really have a use for it in this case but um, what we want to do is go back to automation, go to web core. If you haven't already set up, then go ahead and do that. Go to settings, go to available device, go to available device, and then go down to select compatible. Um, then go down to audio notification devices, select that, and select your devices. So from there, in click save and keep doing save all the way through so from that we can now go to the uh, the browser so from this point what you need to do is go to the following link and um, once you're within the system go to new piston and create a blank I already have one already up, up and loaded so you can take a look at it and um, that way you can get a general idea on things so if we go down to here, um, it, it's best to use if statement. So if you don't know, go click add a new statement, go to if, and then condition. And from here, just select what you want. So if it's a motion detector, then, um, you know, if, if, select that and tell what to do and whatnot. So from there, um, and if, if you have uh, problems, you can delete it, obviously, and redo. So from there, uh, what you need to do is, for motion detectors, make sure where it says is active, um, and that way, whenever it, it detects motion, it actually triggers the thing. You can you, What you can do is you can actually have it where... Um, it, it uh, triggers something so say for example if this detects something then it triggers a virtual device on and then it waits for x amount of time to trigger it again and 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 so on but as far as this goes uh what you need to do is the width is go to add new go to action go to um Let's try find one of the devices the kitchen display let's just use that add a task and then play track and from there you, you would want to copy and paste whatever mp3 link whether it's locally or in this case being some website you can paste it into there and then go ahead and say that and that's that it's simple as that now if you do want to change something if i want to add more devices i can do that or if i want to change that i can change that at any point or if i just wanted to delete that i can do that too so it's <clears throat> pretty important that you know how to do that and that way you can actually have it true now one thing you can do that i didn't do here is you can use the else to you know make it not as long 
Uh, but in this case, I really don't see much of an advantage one way or another. Like, like it's a mute point, uh, but I can use the else statement for in this case where if the garage door is open, then uh, do these things. Else, if the garage door is closed, then do these things. So what happens here is it does a check to see is it open, um, uh, is, is, did a change happen, and it goes from there. So from there, uh, just basically press save, test it out, and it should work. Anyways, as far as that goes, if you've got any questions, anything else, then feel free to leave that down in the comment section. And um, leave like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next video. Hope you have a great day.